concerned about that. I, I have followed all kinds of preachers and speakers and, and clowns and people riding a bicycle in the house of God, and I followed it all, but I've never followed the chicken. Amen. That's just... That's, that's a rough act to follow. And I, I really thank you, sister, wherever you're at for. God, thank you so much. I was praying for you. That's a. Amen. The Lord is good. I was, uh, I was riding uh, with the pastor just a few days ago. We've just, we've just come back. As a matter of fact, we came here from Pennsylvania. Uh, up in the pastor's old stomping grounds up there. And uh, we had a great time in Pennsylvania at a couple of the churches there. And while I was riding with one of the pastors, I did find out why the chicken crossed the road. I, I did. To get killed. Amen. So, <laughs> now let's read our scripture. Amen. In Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5, if they will put that up for us. And uh, is the gentleman here that was preaching a few moments ago, is he still here? Amen. I want you to read that for us and read it real loud from back there. Do you believe what he read? Yeah. Let's pray and pray out loud. Jesus, thank you this morning for the word of the Lord, which is always the same and never changes. I thank you for this great church and these wonderful people. Stretch forth your hand of power and anointing in the name of Jesus. Lay your hand on somebody and pray for them. Thank you, sir. Come on and lay your hand on someone and pray that the Lord will touch them today. <clears throat> you may be seated. The Lord bless you and thank you so much. We're going to talk about what commitment is. But it may be good to, first of all, tell you what it isn't. Commitment, or contentment rather, is not being complacent. It is not complacency. Sometimes it's misunderstood for, well, I, I just don't care, I, I don't need anything, I don't want anything. But never misunderstand that God is not interested in us being filled with complacency. We're going to talk about godliness. And one of the things that we find out about godliness is it's a great gain. People often talk about what we lose to be godly. But in our verse today it says that godliness it within itself is a great gain. We should never spoil what we have by desiring what we have not. Everybody say amen. amen. Often people do that. Church people do that. I want this, I want that, and they forgot that what they now have was one day among the things they only hoped for. It is better to want what you have than to have what you want. Especially if what you want isn't God's will. How many of you since you've had the Holy Ghost would admit without me starting to call people out and reminding you you know you've wanted some things that you shouldn't have to begin with since you've had the Holy Ghost. All right. Thank you. A man in a service a few years ago, I asked a question, is there someone that doesn't believe in this as we were praying for people? And him being young and foolish, 
stood up and said, I don't believe in it. And I said, well, why don't you come down here and find out? So he took the challenge and he started running up to the pulpit where I was. And I said, should I name all three of those women? <laughs> By the way, sir, that is your wife back there you were sitting with, right? He just... Yeah, up in Pennsylvania, I kept running across these places called Turnabout. We, we, don't, we don't see them much in Tennessee. Up there, you just turn around anywhere you want to. But they had a turnabout up there. That boy done a turnabout. First time I ever saw a woman beat a man in the house of God, but I saw it. Watch out who you challenge. Somebody say contentment. It is not complacency. But the Bible says that godliness within itself is not enough. It's quiet. Some people think if I just get godly, that's good. But I saw godly people that are not content. I saw godly people bring discontentment into the house of God. And there may be one of you here that have stirred up a spirit of discontentment. We need to be happy with the pastor we've got. We need to look at what the Holy Ghost has already done through him and what the Holy Ghost is going to do with him that this church is not over. We've just begun. A lack of finances will not stop the work of God. God's going to make a way where there seems to be no way. Would you praise him in this service tonight that God of today, that God is going to baptize you with a spirit of contentment. Let's shout unto the Lord one time. And praise him. I asked a question around the country. I think it was for two years I'd done this. How many of you in that? I, I, I'm not asking you for raise, raising hands. This is the question I ask. How many in this church has recently been thinking about leaving this church? How many of you have been going around with it in your mind? I'm not happy here. And I've done that for almost two years. And on the average, it was around 60 to 65% of people in Pentecostal churches stood up and said, I'm discontent, and I've recently been thinking about leaving. I've done that for two years until I was at one church in Florida. And when I asked the question, the pastor's wife almost had a nervous breakdown. When I asked the question, and when she saw the people in her church stand up, she could not believe that what her and her husband had been pouring into that congregation. Are you still with me? We don't always need to look at things from our viewpoint. We need to look at it sometimes from another viewpoint. Someone sent me a text the other day, and it had a little picture that was added to it. And there was a man standing on a very small island about the size of this platform. And he looked over and he said, my God, it's a boat. And then the man that was in the boat said, my God, it's land. So it's just your perspective. You can't just go by the way you see it. You got you to gotta know how does God see it. How many wants to go beyond where you are and get in the place where God has already envisioned you being? Does anybody believe there's another level for this church? I believe there's a barrier that we're going to break through and the gates of hell shall not prevail. I believe there's a financial barrier in this city and this church is going to have a breakthrough. I believe some of you may have a habit or an addiction, but get ready. There is a Holy Ghost breakthrough that is right in front of you. Would you shout unto the Lord today and say, I'm about to have a breakthrough. 
Come on. Come on. Who would exchange anything for greatness? What is there to exchange for great? But the Bible said that godliness with contentment is great gain. When you get that, there's nowhere else to go. Come on now. There is nothing any better than you having godliness in your life. Did I come to the right church? Do you believe in godliness? Do you still believe in holiness? Do you still believe in one God? Do you still believe in a God that is a God of power and demonstration? When you get to that level, everywhere else is down. Contentment makes a cottage or a cabin look like a palace. Come on. And we ride by, we ride, and we look at beautiful homes. And, and I've heard people say, I wish I had that house. Now those people got that house probably one of two ways. Selling drugs. Or everybody in there's got a job. And they work for it. We live in a time when people have attachments to their happiness. If I had her or if I had him, somebody's already got them and they're probably not happy. <laughs> Quit putting attachments to your happiness and say, I've got Jesus in my heart. And I've got contentment in my life. It's not the size or the square footage of your house. It's the God that's in that home that makes you content. Somebody get up and shout one time and say, I'm happy. I'm content because I got Jesus in my life. Come on and praise the Lord. Go ahead. Praise him a little bit. I perceive and come into this church, I perceive in the Holy Ghost that what this church needs is a new baptism in contentment. What? I mean, I prayed and I said, what does that church need? My God, you got good music. You got good singing. Well, I never get to sing. There's probably a reason. <laughs> Woo! You got a good preacher. You got the best saints. But get ready. There is a coming contentment. You're going to forget about leaving. You're going to forget about quitting. And you're going to get going to heaven on your mind. How many is ready for the Holy Ghost to baptize you in a feeling and a spirit of genuine contentment? Let's worship the Lord and praise Him. Come on and worship the Lord. Contentment is defined as being satisfied. It is defined by Mr. Webster as enough. It is defined as sufficient. Somebody say, that reminds me of Jesus. <laughs> Look at somebody beside you and say, satisfied reminds me of Jesus. 
Did anybody get satisfied in your prayer closet recently? Does anybody got satisfied in church? The devil is a thief and a robber, but if the Holy Ghost really blesses you, he cannot steal the blessing of God out of your mind, out of your heart, and out of your spirit. How many has had God to give you something that the devil don't have the power to take away? Get up and shout one time. Get up and shout. If God's given you something that the devil can't take away, stand up and shout. I'll be ready for some chicken when this is over. In Philippians, Paul is telling us that he's learned in whatsoever state I'm in. State, not mean in Virginia or Pennsylvania. Somebody called me while I was in Pennsylvania. Where are you at? I'm in Pennsylvania. I don't like it up there. Have you ever been here? No. But it's cold. I said, they got heaters up here. I was down in Florida. Same thing. Where you at? I'm in Florida. It's in July. It's hot down. They got air conditioners. Paul said, whatever state I'm in, I've learned to be content. I know some people that hadn't picked up on that yet. I saw grown men before that can sit up in a tree all day long waiting for Bambi. They're so ready to shoot something they don't care if it's got horns or not. I've known of them sitting in a boat all day long. Spent $125 to catch a two-pound fish. They can do all that stuff. But then they say, there's not enough salt on this food. Salt it. Don't express your discontentment with the person that made it. Solve your own problems when you can. Somebody here needs to quit expressing their discontentment. It's time to solve your own problem. Come on. How many believe there's trouble in the church and we need to solve our part of the problem? I'm working on it. I'm practicing. I thank the pastor for having me. I can't believe after all these years he still has me here. I used to think that all I wanted was to see how far ahead I could book. There was a time when that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to know what it was like to have quantity. So I got booked six months ahead and eight months and ten months and a year and a year and a half. And God said, well, are you happy now? I said, no. He said, I knew you wouldn't be because I want to show you something. It's about quality. It's not about just being in a church. Can I tell you this? After preaching 43 years, I want to report to you, you are in a quality church. Come on and somebody shout. The music, the singing, the preaching, the worship. This is a quality church. If you can't be happy here, I'd forget going anywhere else. I'd just wipe it off of my bucket list. Thank you. At least there's one of them feels that way. I agree too. You agree? 
I want you to mean it when you say it now. Somebody told me the other day, they asked me how old I was, and I said, well, I'm 63. They said, well, you don't look bad for 63. And then, and then, a few minutes later, they said, would you pray for me? The doctor said I was going blind. If you're going to be judged, be judged somebody that's got sight in their spirit. The next time somebody judges your church, it's got to be somebody that's got spiritual, Holy Ghost sight. You quit allowing somebody without sight judging who you are. Don't let a non-Pentecost judge your Pentecostal experience. Come on and shout in here today. Quit allowing a non-believer to tell you how to be a believer. It's Sunday morning, and I'm trying to be Sunday morning-fied. Paul was a man that was satisfied. God helped this generation that's looking in all the wrong places to become satisfied. I don't know how you could have any better church than what you've got right here. And I want to tell you, somebody leaving you an inheritance in Missouri, I don't know why I said Missouri, (laughs) South Dakota, Alabama is worth you leaving the will of God. Do you know that the devil will dangle anything in front of you to entice you to leave the will of God? I'd rather be paid half the price and be in the will of God than to receive a satanic blessing to be out of the will of God. Are you still with me? I believe the devil will entice you to leave the will of God. But somebody needs to say, that's where God sent me and that's where I'm staying. That's where God uses me and that's where I'm staying. Are you ready for commitment to come to this church? Are you ready for contentment to come to this church? You're not going to have no contentment until you get commitment. What time do you usually get out? What, what time? Did somebody say one? Who said one? God bless you. Amen. Man. Makes me want to take you up an offering. Amen. Of course, I'll probably give it to the church if I do. But Let's endeavor to be free from the enslavement of always wanting. A lot of people in this church has got three closetfuls of nothing to wear. Well, it's out of style. Just hang on to it like we do long enough. It'll be back in style again. Someone said to me the other day, they said, Brother Grimsley, you know you're preaching in some of those better churches now. And as you go to general conference, there's going to be people that will estimate your value by the clothes you wear. I said, let them buy me all the $5,000 suits they want to. It'll be fine with me. It's not about the tag or the price of your clothes. It's about the price of your experience that you've got with God. I'm going to tell you, God don't care whether your clothes come from Macy's or the GW. Just as long as you're covered, that's what God cares about. Get you some GW clothes, swallow your pride, and be content with what you've got. A person that's not content to do well in their present place because they long to be in a higher place isn't fit to be where they are or where they long to be. God, I wish I was preaching to a bunch of preachers when I said that. 
Stop looking for greener grass and look for the will of God. Traveling around this country, how many times, how many dozens of times have I went and saw a 500-acre pastor and a cow with his head stuck out of the fence, eating out of the ditch where the oil sludge and the cigarette butts and the beer cans are. You'll be glad I come only twice a year when I get through. <laughs> it's all right. You'll have you one of those fancy guys. You'll have one of them come back. One of them that adjusts their glasses and says, I want to tell you what God was trying to say. Kick him out. God never tried to say anything. Let's quit trying to make what God said complex and realize it's so simple that a child can understand it. You can't be too lost for God to save you. You can't be too sick for God to heal you. You can't be so discontent that God can't get a hold of your spirit and your mind and fill you and flood you with Holy Ghost contentment with such things as you have. Let's clap our hands to the Lord. Let's worship him and give him glory in the house of the Lord today. The lesson here in our text that we understand is that there is an abiding presence of God. When I talk about contentment, I cannot talk about it without mentioning the abiding presence of God. That's what contentment is about. Not a Sunday God. But a Sunday through Sunday God. It's his presence that makes a difference. His presence in it, in us, fullness of joy. Paul experienced God's presence in a prison. Of course, some people can be in a Pentecostal church service and still be in a prison. Your mind can be in a prison. You can only be thinking about, I want this, I need that, I need this over here. Maybe we need to praise him for what he's already done before we ask him for anything new. Maybe we need to say, thank you for that car that's falling apart. Thank you for the home that is not perfect. Thank you, God, for my church. Thank you, Lord, for what I already have. I don't want to ask you for anything else. I just want to praise you for what I've already got. Does anybody here need to praise God right now for something you already have before you ask him anything else? I want you to praise him right now according to the level that he deserves. Praise him according to what he's done for you. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead and shout. God is filling you today with contentment again. Oh, hallelujah. what he's already done. He's the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of 10,000. He's a way maker, a Holy Ghost and fire baptizer, the wheel in the middle of the wheel. He's my joy in the morning. He's the sunshine after the midnight hour. Lay your hand on somebody and say, the storm may be around you, but it is not in you. Say that to somebody right now. H 
children got the Holy Ghost? How many? Seven children got the Holy Ghost. And what does that cost? 800 a month. And they get to go over there four times. Did I tell you I was going to do anything about a $100 bill today? I know I didn't, Sister Grinsley. That's my $100 bill. I'll do with it whatever I want to do with it. I want to invest. If seven children got the Holy Ghost the first time, would anybody like to bring a $100 check or a $100 offering up here to pay it again? If it cost $800 a night, I wish we could get two months of that, or a month, a month, $800. We, we should easily be able to get one time of this. I, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could get two months of that up here? Wouldn't that, j just keep right on, just... I don't care if you're not content bringing it up here. Bring it up here anyway. <laughs> I want the discontented, the uncontented to bring your $100 off. You, you are investing in children receiving the Holy Ghost. Come on now. I'll, I'll tell you what, you'll get better than lottery money out of that. I don't know if you feel it, but I've been feeling the Holy Ghost walking in here this morning. I've been feeling the one that can make you feel better than you've ever felt in your life. How many feels liberty in here today? Who will you believe? Are you going to believe the devil that said we can't do it? Are you going to believe a God that says, I'm going to bring that new feeling that you had when you first got in this church? I'm going to fill you with joy and peace and happiness. Stop saying I felt something and let's start saying I know what I felt. I feel the Holy Ghost. Quit calling God something and call God what he is, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the great I am, not the great I was. Yeah. Woo, hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand clap for an investment into this. Come on and give the Lord praise for it. Pastor will put that where it needs to go. You ask some of these fancy preachers and they come sometime, where's their $100 bill? Yeah, I said it and I'll say it to them, amen. I hadn't been around this wrong because I'm a sissy and I'm afraid. I believe the church is gonna get so anointed we're gonna stand up to the devil. I don't believe we're gonna wait for him to come to our house. We're gonna go down to his camp and say, I want you to look who I brought with me. I brought the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I'm tired of you walking on me. I'm gonna walk on you and ask you, how do you like it? Let's give the Lord a hand clap for this free will, this free will offering today. I believe we're getting a miracle up here. I said, I believe we're getting a miracle up here. I believe the Holy Ghost was in this right now. You're making an investment into this church. Psalms 24 and 7, I don't know if they can put that up, but if you can, I'll preach it anyway. If you do, I will. And if you don't, I'll still preach it. <laughs> Who is this king of glory? The song represents an appeal, Pastor, Psalms 24 and 7, that's made for God's entrance into the heart of man. But the Bible said, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the king of glory, what? Might? Could? Do you believe when he gets in you, you're going to be satisfied? Do you believe when Jesus gets inside of you, you're going to be satisfied? Anybody can echo preach. Listen to what I'm telling you now. Anybody can echo preach. online or I heard so and so preach this but the Bible said that John was the voice of one 
crying in the wilderness. Don't echo somebody's testimony. Remember what he's done for you and get your own. For we're made to be an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony. Has anybody got a testimony in this house that he lifted you up, that he planted your feet upon a rock and established your going? Rid us, Lord, of useless preachers. Jesus said, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Preachers going around talking about how their wife can cook. Wouldn't do you no good. You'll never get any of it anyway. I'm not here to tell you about my wife. I know preachers getting up talking about my shoes cost so much. I've got so much. Somebody needs to tell them, you can't have no more than I got. I got baptized in his name. I got full of the Holy Ghost. You don't go to church for somebody to walk on you. You go to church to get your soul fed. You go to church to get power over all the power of the devil. This is not a house of criticism. It's the house of prayer. It's a house where God transitions people from where they are to where he wants them to be. Let me remind you again, this gospel is for whosoever will. The engineer that made the bridge and the bum living under the bridge. I'm not a high roller. I'm not interested in being a high roller. I'm not interested in the inner circle. I'm interested in doing what I've always done. That's just preaching. I'm not interested in being fancy. I'm not interested in being politically correct. I'm just interested in preaching the word of God unadulterated. I'm interested in picking somebody up that's been beat down. I'm interested in telling a mother that's been left by a sorry husband. God's going to help you with those children. God's going to help you with those bills. I'm interested in taking somebody that the devil's worked over and over again, got you backed up in a corner. I'm interested in telling you there's an angel coming to that corner. He's going to pull you out, not by might, not by power, but but by his spirit, you're going to make it. Somebody worship him. Somebody honor the king of kings. The scripture about lift up your heads and, and the king of glory paint us a picture that the mind and the heart of man or humanity is God's temple. It's his purpose. It's your grand reason for being here is so God can, you are the habitation of God. See, we look for God when the real key is not looking for God. It's, I know where he's at. Did you hear me? The grand purpose of God is not just for you to see him in somebody else, but see him in you. Get up in the morning and say, my body is not a shack. It's a temple for the Holy Ghost to live in. The grand purpose of God is to know you've got him, not that you're looking for him. Who is this king of glory? Satan is described as the prince of darkness. God is described as is the king of glory. Your heart and your mind are a sanctuary and a habitation of the divine. Somebody give him a place to live right now. Somebody, somebody say this with me. I admit you, Lord, into my heart. I wish someone would say that. You've got a ticket of admission, Holy Ghost, in my mind. I'm going to tell you, when God walks in, trash walks out. Come on. Did anybody get that? When the Holy Ghost walks in, trash and garbage walks out. I know I got to close, I know. 
Oh, it's not that late. <laughs> Who is this King of glory? The glory of God that dwelled between the cherubims also dwells in the heart of his people. You are God's temple. Look at somebody beside you and say, you are God's temple. Well, hallelujah. Do you know what you just said? The God that raised the dead is not a billion miles away. He's in you. You just got to start recognizing what you've already got instead of wanting the trash that you don't have. Patch up the holes in that temple and stop the glory from oozing out. Dear Lord, do you see this? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I quit. If somebody comes here and they have a problem preaching, I'd have a problem having them again. <laughs> My. We don't need a three-month study on the book of Jude. It's got one chapter. I know some of you didn't know it, amen. <laughs> Ooh, pray for me, Sister Grimms. I'm feeling good. He said, I come that you might have life and you might have it more abundantly. Does anybody want to start claiming abundant life? There's people, there's people living in a 5,000 square foot house that don't have no abundant life, but there's people living in a 1,000 square foot home and they've got abundant Jesus in that 1,000 square foot. It's not what you've got, it's what God's got in what you've got. Let's stand. I'm going to close in a minute. I've got to. I, dear Lord, we'd be here till tonight service. I was in a church a while back and they were singing. They, they sung songs they knew. They even sung songs they didn't know. And they were singing and singing and singing and I changed what I was going to know. I didn't know. I, didn't know. I said, Lord, I, I got to preach. I got to preach this message. I don't care how long they sing. And as I walked by, there was one Jamaican guy sitting right on the corner of the pew there. And as I walked by, this is what he said. He said, if they sing to midnight, you preach to daylight. <laughs> oh, I've liked him ever since then. Amen. Content with husband, wife, content with children, content with parents and job and life and church and pastor and other Christians. If we've given admission to our heart and our mind to fear and anxiety and depression and doubt and hopelessness, intimidation, guilt and jealousy. Anybody get any of that? I've got a warning. We have been defiling the temple because your body is supposed to be a temple for God. Get the anxiety and the depression and the doubt and the hopelessness and intimidation and the guilt and the jealousy. Just one visit from God. What is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou do it visit him? How many has given your body and your mind and your life? How many has given yourself wholly to God? Let me see your hand if you have. If you've given yourself wholly to the Lord, let me see your hand for a moment and you may put it back down. Do you know that if you have given yourself to God, that we have no legal right to yield God's property to Satan's control? I didn't send off and get that. I didn't find it online. I didn't hear another preacher preach it. I just sat down and I said, God, what can I tell those people this morning? And that's what he told me to put down. He said, tell them that if they're mine and they've turned their lives over to me, 
they no longer have a legal right to think negative. <laughs> they no longer have a legal right to lust. They <laughs> Is anyone receiving this? Oh, let's, let's lift our hands to our legal representative, the judge of all the earth, and say, I'm yours, Lord. I'm yours. I'm yours. My mind, my heart, my spirit, my being <laughs> is yours. It's yours. And then, Pastor Blankenship, I, I hate to close, but I've got to. You know how it is. You're... You're on that wave and you're riding it and you just don't want the wave to quit, but I know I'm headed to the shore on this wave. Amen. And if I have godliness and if I have contentment, I have great gain. Oh, once more, place your hand on someone that is appropriate and say, God is causing you to gain greatness right now greatness is in your life. I want you to use that word to someone. Greatness. You're, you're a great child of God. You're a, you're a great saint, a great man, a great woman. Can't let somebody hear some good news today. Great. 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 I'm not quitting because I don't have anything else to say. I'm quitting because I have too much to say. I want a man to run up here. All I want you to do is grab this microphone and say, thank God we got a great church and a great pastor. Why, one, is there one man? Is it going to take that long? Just come out here and say, just say what I said. Thank God for a pastor and this great church. Amen. Woo Somebody else. One more man. Nobody else. Won't. What is wrong with you people? Say it. Thank God for this great pastor and great church. Amen. Thank you for a great pastor and a great church. Give the Lord a hand clap. How about a lady? Is there a lady in here? Come up here and say it. Here you come. Come on and say it. Go ahead. Go Thank ahead. God for this great man of God and this great awesome church and Brother Grinsley. Give the Lord a hand Thank clap. God for this great pastor and this great church. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for this great pastor, his wife, and his wonderful church. Go ahead and say it. Thank God for a great pastor, great leadership, great fellowship, and a great church. Somebody say greatness. greatness. Say it with me. Godliness and contentment is great gain. Thank God for this great church and this great pastor and his wife. Amen. Come on. God is great and greatly to be praised. Thank God for a great man of God and a great church and his teaching. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I didn't think I was going to get it back. Now, if there's anybody out there, you're just too tired to patty cake. If you'll call me, I'll help you clap your hands. If you really believe that your godliness is greater than the devil has ever identified to you, if you believe there has been a cloak if you believe there's been almost a satanic covering over what God wants you to realize you've got, I want you to start clapping your hands with a praise and shouting, great, great. Our God is great. I'm a great child of God. I'm great. I'm great in the Holy Ghost. I'm great with anointing.
if I looked at this church in a military sense, and I can't, I can't say this everywhere I go. There, there's places that conviction would not allow me to say this. But I want to tell you how I would look at your pastor if I wasn't if I wasn't on the field and we were preaching all the time, my what an opportunity it'd be for me just to come and sit right here. Because I think your pastor is a general. Five star, yes sir. Five star. A commanding general. Don't you ever, and I tell you this from the office of the prophet, come on. have your cell phone going when this general's up here at this pulpit. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. If you like that, let me know it. And if you don't, come down here and tell me. Amen. See how that works for you. Hallelujah. You ain't got nothing incoming or outgoing on that cell phone. It's any more important than what God's trying to ring to you. I won't. I think this morning for a couple of times, I'm going to do something I rarely do. I love to pray for people individually. But there just seems to be so much that needs to be done. I don't want you to look at how you feel now, but... I want you to remember how you were feeling this morning and what's been going on. and Be honest, man up or woman up, if you've been discontent lately with yourself, with people around you, the way things are going. Come stand up here at the front. Don't wait and see if, any, if you're the only person that comes up here and you've been, you've been discontent. Come, come stand up at the front. You've not been content. Pastor, I was with I was with a man a while back, and this man has got millions of dollars. I mean, no, he didn't get it. <laughs> Just loaded. He don't know how many homes, cars, wives, I mean, uh, <laughs> he don't know what all this guy does. And he looked at us, he looked at my little family and he said, how in this world can you not even know if you're going to make your payment on the next month on your vehicle, which we live like that, so I'll be honest with you. I'm not, I'm not going to exalt myself and say, oh, I got it and we got this. and we. All I got is on the other side. All right, amen. I used to have it. I See, when I wasn't in truth, I never had to worry about finances. In the Assembly of God Church, people used to push their tithes under the office door. Ninety-something percent of the people in the Assembly of God Church I pastored, between three and four hundred people, I left it in 1988. Ninety-something percent of them had the Holy Ghost. I could ask people to come change a light bulb in my house. There'd be five people come over to change it. I'm going to get a car. There'd be people see me at church. You need a couple thousand dollars? You have to be out with a down payment on that? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm going to buy a piece of land. I wanted to buy 25 acres of land one time. There was a rush. I want you to have this. I want you to have that. But I want, I want to tell you something. I want to tell you. I, I left that and I came out. And I can't remember how many years it was I run revivals. I can't remember the date. But there was a pastor down in Florida that said, I want you for a year-long revival. I wonder if you'll commit to it. So I went down for a year-long revival, and about nine or ten months into it, he said, I want another year to tell you the truth about it. My church will take care of you. We'll build you a home. We'll retire you, and I'll take care of your wife after you're dead and gone. We, you'll never have to worry about finances. But I want to tell you, 
This pastor right here played such a role when I left that security. Because in prayer, I said, Lord, where do you want me? Because I begin to feel one day not content. Yes. And it wasn't here. I don't know where the building's at, but something was going on here or this building. I can't remember, but you were in another building right here somewhere on this street. At the gym. Okay? And it, it was packed. I mean, it was just packed in that building like sardines when I went in that night. It was my first night of preaching somewhere after I had left that church and all of that security. And I will never, as long as I have my right mind, forget when I walked in and I saw on the screen evangelist Steve Grimsley. I will never forget him. I saw my name on a marquee probably a thousand times or more. But that one stands out to me more than any other time. I said, I'm back in my habitation. I'm back in my place. I'm back in my groove. I don't know when God will change that, but I'll never forget what it felt like that day. The first time I saw that again, I felt contentment come to my spirit. Sister Grimms and I didn't have a home. Three pastors here in the Virginia district paid for us to have a home. They rented us a house for one year. What a blessing that was. <laughs> what a blessing it is to be content. You understand, if any of you did not understand, do you understand what I called for a moment ago? I said if you're not content and you need a greater portion of contentment in your life to come up here, that would mean that each one of you standing up here in the front is a testimony. That there's another level in your life. There may be another level, but let me tell you, it is not an impossible level. I have been so content in some of the greatest confinement that many of you could not live in. Pastor and First Lady, I believe, has lived in those conditions a few times in the early ministry. In an RV, in a motor home, in a fifth wheel, in a travel trailer. I've been so happy people could not understand. It's your perspective. Do we understand that? It's, it's our perspective. Sometimes happiness or sorrow, either one, is not necessarily our circumstances. It's a state of mind. Is this true, Pastor? Let's say it together. Happiness, happiness. or sorrow, or sorrow. Isn't, always isn't always my circumstances. It's my state of mind. You that are standing here in a mass miracle type of way, let's believe God for a real big miracle right now. Lay your hand on someone close and say, God's going to change your thinking today. God's going to change your thinking. God's going to change your pattern of thought life. God's going to change the way that you think about things, your, your perception of things. God's going to change the way you look at it. Hallelujah. Lord, give us a miracle right now all across the front of this church. We're going to start looking at our lives, our personal lives in a different way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're changing right now. God is changing the way you think about it. God is changing your concept of yourself. Wake my mind up today, Holy Ghost. Wake up my thinking. Wake up my gray matter. Wake me up. Let me see what I've got. Thank you. Let me see what I've got. Love. Ooh, hallelujah. Come on, come on. It's happening today. It's happening today. God is waking you up. Oh, begin to see what God has for you. Begin to recognize what the Holy Ghost has for you. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God.
Yes, come on. Come on, come on. I want you to listen. Listen. The average brain weighs three pounds. Everybody say three pounds. Three pounds. One third of all the oxygen you take into your body goes into your brain. That's right. The old saying that we only use 10% of our brain is a lie. It is not the truth. Why? I ask you why, and not only because of this, I've studied it, and it's a fact. Why would God make something that you only had, you could only use 10% of it? It's just a lie. It's just, it's something we believe because we've heard it and we've heard it. It is a fact that all the activity, all the brain has activity to it, and all of it can be used. Now then, I ask you a very serious question. If the average brain weighs three pounds, how is it that so many of us have met quarter pounders? <laughs> Good question. Amen. Have you ever met a quarter pound brain? <laughs> Amen. Come on. Everybody say quality. Quality. See, quality and contentment kind of, they have a marriage, they kind of blend. Don't they, Pastor? Quality of life and contentment. What is quality of life? Is it another $5 an hour or $10 more an hour? What is quality of life? You never change the quality of your life until you change the quality of your thought life. You can be right in a Holy Ghost service and never get out of it before your thoughts begin to go down the gutter. But there's a God watching your thought life. Today, Lord, I don't want to repent of something I've done. I want to repent of things I thought. Would somebody repent of your thought life? Would, would anybody here challenge God to take your thinking over? Would you love for God to take your thinking process over? Take my thought life over today. I want to quit thinking that so-and-so doesn't love me or somebody hates me or I don't fit into the church. I, I want to stop my negative thinking. In Jesus' name. I, I would love for the elders and ministers of the church, if you know of someone, if you'll look among us and find someone that would allow us to pray for them to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost this morning, would our ministers and elders of the church and those that help out in prayer if you would begin to walk around, look around, see if you can get someone that doesn't have the Holy Ghost today, I would love to pray for someone. We have prayed against your discouragement. I want to pray now for jobs while I'm waiting to see if someone is going to come for the baptism. I want to pray for jobs or better jobs. Yes, sir. You want prayer for your job? Someone else about a job. All of you about your jobs, come and stand right in this area. I believe this is very, very important today. It's imperative that we pray for that. Is that right, Pastor? I, I don't know why, Pastor, but I just feel like doing things this way this morning. I, I usually always go around one at a time, but it, it just seems like it keeps coming to me. There's a lot of ground to be covered. We can cover it a lot quicker this way. People are sometimes impressed because you go up and tell people their house number or where they live at or things about them that they don't know or other people don't know, but I'm not here to impress anybody. I just want to cover a lot of ground today. Does this line about jobs end right here? Is this the end of this line right here? All right, we're, we're going to be right with you. Don't we? Just, you, you found one, didn't you? I like, hang on, don't let her go. Hang on, Frank. Hang on, Frank. Amen. Is anybody going to help me pray now? I'm going to come, I'm going to take time to pray for each one of you individually. In the name of Jesus. While you're at it, Lord, move that oppression that wants to come into that family. There you go. There you go. 
You do have a change ahead of you. I want you to know that. I see it in the Holy Ghost. Go ahead and rejoice before you ever get it. Before you ever receive it, begin to rejoice in the Lord. The job is on the way. The answers are coming. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Give them those jobs, Lord, in this economy, in this hard and striving time economically. God bless them with the best. I ask you, Lord, to bless with the best. In Jesus' name, I come against it. I come against them losing their jobs. I ask you to give them the best, that the best is yet to come. Oh, hallelujah. Sir, in Jesus' name, ma'am, in the name of the Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name. Let's sing right along with them while we pray here. God bless you. How are you doing? You're the one that wants the Holy Ghost. Isn't that wonderful? God's going to heal you too. Lift your hands up to the Lord. Just go ahead and worship. If you want to cry, that's all right. Oh, just go ahead and stand before the King of Kings. God is about to bless you today. Go ahead, church. Do you feel the Holy Ghost in here? Come help me pray. Come on up here. Say this with me. Say, Jesus, I repent of my sins today. I want to live for you. I want to serve you. I want to put the past behind me. I'm ready to receive the Holy Ghost. Do you believe that? Say this with me. Say, Jesus, you said in the last days you would pour your spirit out on all flesh. I am flesh. I'm qualified right now. Speak in tongues. There it is. There you go. Go ahead. Oh yes, come on, come on, come on. anointing is on you right now. Go ahead and worship and praise the Lord. Worship and praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.